<laughs> Hi, and welcome back to the Ascension Playground. My name is Ursi, and if you haven't figured it out by now, you can probably tell that I'm pretty good at entertaining myself. So today, I am going to talk to you about cards. Remember this up in cabins or when you go on retreat or vacation? The old card deck. This is not tarot. This is just your old um, game of cards, right? So I want to tell you this little story. All right. We probably have all watched the Da Vinci Code. Was it was it um, Tom Hanks? And you know, the message in that movie was, if you want to hide something, hide it in plain sight. So there is a story about the card deck, you know, with the hearts, the clubs, the diamonds. Um, I didn't know this until just recently, but you know, with COVID, what are you going to do? You're going to keep exploring new divinatory practices, right? So here's the story. Way back, before Christ was born even, and some say even before that, pre-Egyptian, there was a system to understand how your life might unfold based on the day you were born. It's not the year, but the day. So every day of the year had a special meaning, a special significance. This is not astrology. This is not um, the I Ching. But here's how the story goes. Once upon a time, a long time ago, there was a star in Bethlehem. And there were three wise men called the three magi. Magi meaning magician, wise men. Hard to say, but they were very special three of them, men, traveling and following the star. Well, back in the day, before writing and publishing of, and, and learning how to read words, there was something called oral tradition. Stories were handed down from one generation to the next, um, like the time of Christ. There weren't presses and people taking notes about what was being said by Jesus. Instead, it was oral tradition. And one, you know, someone saying something and then someone sharing that with others. And so it stays within a community through oral tradition. So way back when, there were three wise men traveling and following the star of Bethlehem. Okay. So some people point back to that time as to when the mystery of the card deck started to become more revealed. So in those days, mm, the strata was, here's who the people who could know mystical and esoteric things, the small elite, and then maybe some of the rulers, but certainly not the masses. But if you're going to communicate through the masses and through multi-generations, how were you going to do it? So one of the stories is that within the plain card deck is a divinatory system hidden in plain sight, just like the Da Vinci Code. Okay, how does it work? Let me show you. I'm going to go and share my screen. Bear with me. What you see on the screen says and destiny. It's a birth chart. Here at the top row, we have January, February, March, all the way through December. And on this row, we see numbers 1 through 31. So let's just say you were born on March 3rd. I find March, I find the 3rd, and I scroll over here and I end up on the seven of spades. That birth date carries the frequency in this card deck of the seven of spades. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, ah, this is getting a little too wild. 
but if you bear with me, it's fascinating when you find out what your birth date's card is. Don't you want to know? Well, stay with me and I'll, I'll help share this with you. If there's a way for you to screen shoot this love and destiny birth chart or just Google the words, you'll find images under Google Images of this very chart. There's also a book and I'm going to share that book with you. But before I do, let me practice a few more. So birth dates, birth dates. There's a funny birth date. Let's say you were born in December. If you were born December 1st, you're the four of diamonds. Carry that energy. But you're going to see, oh, but there's other four of diamonds. Look, if I was born April 17th, I'm a four of diamonds too. So yes, you're right. Um, the suits are here. Clubs, diamonds, hearts, and spades. Okay. And the numbers. So the numbers of like ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Those represent um, special meanings as well. In other words, ace through ten, you're working on issues. Okay, you're part of the working on issues class. If your birth date happens to fall on what they call a royal card, uh, royalty is jack, king, queen, I think that's it, yep, jack, king, or queen, it means you've elevated and done some already work to get yourself to this place of the next step. Jacks are typically um, the initiates. You're trying to move into your king or queen level, but you're still working on stuff, but you've just come from the 10. So jacks are the, the free, carry the frequency of the initiates or, or the young ones who are royal, but they're still working on stuff. The queen represents the highest form of the feminine of her suit, whether it's the queen of hearts, queen of diamonds, etc. She is the mother divine feminine. Now, if you're a man and you find that you are born on a queen day, not to worry. I'll explain the story in a minute. It's a little complicated, but it's fun once you get to figure out, how do I play this game? Okay. Um, and then let's end with the king. The king in any of the suits has mastered that whole suit. Let's say I'm the king of hearts. I have mastered all the issues that the hearts suit is here to do. Hearts are typically here to work on relationships. Do I have your attention? So if you meet a king of hearts, you know, you might find him or her, because it could be a woman ending up with, as the birth date of the king of hearts, to have some special skills around relationships love and romance, getting along. Okay, that's just an example. King of clubs, this is a master of knowledge. Books, books, classes, knowledge. The king of clubs embodies wisdom. So now we've covered king of hearts, about relationships, king of clubs. Next, we got king of diamonds. All right, the diamonds. If I'm the king of diamonds, I have mastered what I value. It's going to be love or money. Love or money. Interesting, right? Oftentimes they say you have to choose one or the other, love or money. It's kind of like Scrooge. You know, am I going to love money at the expense of relationships? Or am I going to love relationships at the expense of money? <laughs> so anyway, but the king level has mastered both. Okay, now, if you end up being the king of spades, if that's your birth date, you have ascended to a place, actually the pinnacle of all the cards, where the king of spades has been able to master life through experience. So it's not book learning, it is real life experience. So we start with hearts. Hearts is about learning about love and relationships. Sometimes it's self-love. Then the next level is clubs. 
Am I learning in school? Am I learning book knowledge? Okay. And then after that, then you're out in the world, third level. I'm working with diamonds, money, marriage, love, or not. Okay. So, and then the last level is spades. If you find that your birth card is in spades, you are here to learn about life, real life, not on TV, not in a classroom, but out in the world, hard knock life. Okay. So let's see, I'm going to call out a few um, birth dates. And so if you're still listening, I'm going to share this with you. If you're born January 1st, you are the king of spades. January 2nd, queen of spades. January 3rd, jack of spades. So at the beginning of our brand new year, every year, January 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, you've got the king, queen, and jack. Bam, bam, bam. So if you know anyone born on those first three days of the year, whoa, um, they are really here to learn about experience. So there's stories with, with each of the numbers, with each of the suits. I just wanted to just show you this chart at first to see I happen to be, dun, 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 dun. don't tell anyone, but I'm the jack of clubs. And if you could see my bookshelves, people think I'm a little bit cuckoo. Well, I know I'm a little cuckoo because I just love spiritual books, esoteric books. I have books about books. And one of my daughters once told me, but mom, you have so many books, but I don't ever see you reading. And she was referring reading as like novels for fun, you know, but no, I am a ferocious, like must get book to help me understand. And then I research and I try and put the dots together. That gives me joy. So my birthday, September 13th is the Jack of Clubs. Now I'm gonna stop sharing for just one moment. Uh, hello, there is a book, don't you know? In fact, I have like about four books, but this is the first book. It's called Cards of Your Destiny written by a very interesting man named Robert Lee Camp. <laughs> you can find him on YouTube. He has some very interesting YouTube um, discussions around the cards of your destiny. I remember um, living in Florence, Italy for a year and some of the street vendors, one would be selling chestnuts roasting on a little open flame. And then another one would be selling trinkets or pashmina. But this one vendor was selling destiny cards. He'd say, come over, you want to know your destiny. So there's symbols. You can use the plain card deck to, as an oracular kind of divination system. You know, you want to know your fortune lady? And I'm like, ah, stay away. Uh, but now I'm older and I'm like, yeah, I want to know my fortune. Or I want to know what card am I? This system that Robert Lee Camp writes about in his Cards of Your Destiny, you don't just have one card, you have a primary one, but you also have a planetary ruling card, so that's a secondary card, and you have a decanate card, that's a tertiary card. So you actually have three cards per person. That's how it rolls. But the first card is the place to start. What card are you? And do you know the story of your card? I'm going to pause there for a minute and go, hmm. So I'll tell you a little bit more about myself by sharing this screen. Let's see. Okay, there we go. If you decide to look into Robert Lee Camp's book, oh, here we go. I printed out his birth card lookup chart. And there's a wonderful woman, Kathleen Kowski. Kathleen. Bent Kowski, Destiny Cards Explained. You can get for like, I think $25, your own personal report. You just send her your birth information. She spits out this report and she's the most loving person. But she's basing all of her, her reports on this foundational book by Robert Lee Camp. Okay, so we talked about the every day and the calendar has a card. However, there is one birth date that 
breaks the rule. Of course it would break the rule. And this birth date would be, dun, 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 dun. do you know anyone on born on December 31st, the very last day of the year? They are not a numeric card, but they are, get this, the Joker. Yes, they are the Joker. And I looked it up. My very favorite painter of all times is Henri Matisse. Matisse was born on December 31st. And guess what? I don't know Tarot very well to speak fluently, um, but it is the fool's card. It's the fool that steps off the mountain. I'm trusting that, you know, spiritual guidance will bring in the next rock for its, his foot to fall onto, or he plummets to his death. This is the Joker. If you're born on December 31st, you will either have the opportunity to do really well, like Henri Matisse, you know, La Joie de Vivre. His paintings are major museums around the world, primarily Western museums, I should say. Or you could just be nobody. You could choose to just be undercover and not make much of your life. That is the card of the Joker, December 31st. Do this, here's the book. Let me bring this up a little higher so I can read to you. Excuse the strange camera. Here we go. Here's how I use the book. <laughs> when you open it up, and this is all my writing, you're gonna find by month, all of the dates and the cards. And BC means your birth card. PRC is your secondary card, your planetary ruling card. So I don't really want to explain that now because it might get too astro on you, like astro speak. So what you do is you actually start from the back. On page 371, I found my birth date, 913. Can you see that? And it says the Jack of Clubs is my primary card. So then from my birthday on the 13th, you have these periods of time. Okay, so I have a time where Mercury's influence will be strongest from September 13th and through November 4th. Okay, and then Venus will be strong from November 4th through December 26th. This is just how this game plays, right? Okay, so you find out which period am I in? So I am currently in a Saturn period, my destiny cards. This will make sense in a minute. So from April 10th until, what is that? June 1st, June 1st is my Saturn period. And after Saturn, it'll turn into Uranus, Neptune, and then I'm back to my again. Okay, so that is how it rolls. And on the back of his book, you can find your birth date and find out what your periods are in the cycle. Okay, so how this makes sense. I then move to page 297. Here we go. And since I'm that tender, sweet age of 59, can you see this? I show the number 59. Sorry, it's really small print, so you have to almost wear your glasses. Get, get the readers out. And then I look at my Saturn period, and I go down here, and I see the card Two of Clubs. The Two of Clubs in my Saturn period for this age is going to inform me of something that I should be aware of. Okay, so then I... Four, two of clubs in Saturn. What is the message for me? Oh, so the two of clubs, because I know that card, that card is, two is usually about duality and clubs, there's, yes, book knowledge, but the two of clubs, all the twos, frankly, are very, can be because they're duality, very fearful. So you have to learn how to balance the good with the other, love with fear. Okay, so how to hold it. 
So when it shows up for me, a jack of clubs in my Saturn period saying, pay attention to the message of two of clubs in Saturn, I go and I, for me, Ursula, for the next couple of weeks, avoid all arguments and quarreling during this period as they will have pronounced negative results now. So if you have a beef with me, save it. If I have a beef with you, I'm gonna zip it. Why? Because it'll have negative results for me. Ah! If I've been harboring negative attitudes about anything or anyone, I will now be confronted with the results of such attitudes. Now here's the caution. My health could suffer now at the hands of my belief system. This period could also see a meeting with a doctor or a lawyer for some reason. Power and success are gained through cooperation and a positive attitude. Yeah, and for just a moment. I am all about, okay, cautionary, but not fearful. Pay attention, maybe that advice like, hey, don't forget to just drive a little more carefully, pay attention. So I'm gonna move in the next few weeks between now and early June and just maybe watch any negative thinking, any negative words that might come out and really pay more attention to my health and my body. Ah, I'm gonna sit with that and I'm gonna be right back because I'm gonna go find some more information about my birth card. Don't wanna jump around too much, but I wanna tell you this divinatory system there is a method to the magic of how it un unravels because Robert Lee Camp will teach you how to track certain times where one, you could meet a soulmate. Two, you could really get that job you really truly want. Three, you could say, pay attention to your health issues, which I'm getting that message now. Um, oh, there's a second paragraph to this message before I um, leave you in a second. The Two of Clubs is also known as the Fear Card, and under Saturn's influence, it is very likely that I will experience some of this more or less negative influence. Okay, any haters out there? Just, I'm gonna just let it all slide. It is usually a fear of being alone or the fear of death. Oh, the fear of being alone or the fear of death. And it may not have any basis in reality. The best remedy for this fear is patience and doing things that relax me and make me happy. Well, I gotta tell you, um, I feel like I'm having a little party with you in YouTube. Uh, you know, this is real new for me still. Uh, I, I know you can't believe this, but I was very, 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 very apprehensive and shy about even coming out. But now that thanks to Robert and Danny, I'm blah, blah, blah. So back to the message. Any attempts to change my external situation now, if motivated by this fear, will likely backfire. Before trying to change any part of the world outside of me, be with my inner feelings and my chances for success will be much greater. So I hold space for that message to say, here's fear, here's love. If I can't reach love, let me just try and get to that neutral part, the center of that axis. Let me just get to neutral, you know, meditation, time out, just smelling the roses. Um, so thank you, two of clubs. I'll watch my communication. I'll watch my health and I'll make sure not to argue with too many people. <laughs> yeah, do you hear that kids? Um, mom's going to be like, oh, I'm going to be like the Buddha, just sitting there and emanating. I'm not going to engage in any uh, point, counterpoint uh, for, until June 1st. And then I'm going to let it all out, right? So I'm going to pause for a moment. I'll be right back. Hi, I'm back again. So I wanted to share the second book that I bought by Robert Lee Camp love cards, right? <laughs> this one really helps and it's thick and you're going to see a lot of, uh, um, but it helps you understand yourself even more deeply. I could look up the relationships I have with my children, with my loved ones, 
my siblings, my parents. You know, this really helped me understand a little bit more about myself as a jack of clubs. But, um, hello, Sophie. There's another book that is also by Robert Lee Camp. This one looks a little more esoteric and woo-woo, doesn't it? Exploring the Little Book of the Seven Thunders. I know, Sophie, it's, it's a lot. Here we go. I'm going to screen share and just show you. Because I think my next life, I'm going to become a spiritual bookseller, some, a publisher, somebody, because I just love these books. Here we go. I want you to just, if you're able to look at this image, look at that. He's referring to Egyptian time, even pre-Egyptian, with the winged disc, the triad, the solar light, the pillars, and what's in the angel's hand? A card deck, of course, with the ace of spades right on top. Well, in this book, I just wanted to show you. <laughs> you want to get to know yourself a little more deeply, there is, but here's a little more on the Queen of Diamonds. All right. So the mother of higher values, the philanthropist. So if that is you, brava, brava. And then it gets to be this little science stuff here. It's not Sudoku or Sudoku. I can't remember how to say that word, but Okay, I'm going to show you the Jack of Clubs. Here I am. Now, I am not bragging. This is what it re reads. The youthful genius. <laughs> and then they call it the androgynous card. Okay, androgyny. Here I am. Um, what it's saying is that there's a balance between the masculine and the feminine. It's almost, um, you know, where we're moving toward. But youthful genius, uh, that's yet to be determined. And then they talk a little bit about, um, you know, the relationship with the Jack of Clubs in its various other, um, like how it is with other cards. So <laughs> I'm just going to call this <laughs> one. Um, if you know many Jack of Clubs people, you may see in them that androgynous quality that no other card possesses. After using and studying the cards for over 12 years, Robert Lee Camp is saying, I can usually guess a Jack of Clubs person before they tell me their birthday. <laughs> There's usually a look on their face of an intelligence and peace, but something more too um, that he's learned to look for. This is a card of high intelligence and a fixed mind to boot. Mm. So blah, blah, blah. They're known for a keen memory, possibly due to the placement of a queen of spades moon card. Um, being so Aquarian in their love nature is a challenge for Jack of Clubs people to find their own personal group to belong to. It is Aquarian to be bisexual and it is Aquarian to seek one's flock or group to belong to. Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, the same Aquarian energy makes most Jack of Clubs very fun and easy to be with. They will appreciate you having you around if you are part of their flock. I have no idea why I shared that with you other than, you know, coming out on an Ascension playground to just play with some of these uh, esoteric divinatory practices is a joy for me. Um, but even more joyful than that is when I get to read your comments or get to meet you through your comments, hello, um, it's even more amazing. Um, when my friend Raven Many Voices gave the call out last year that 2022, this is the year to roar. And you're each of us roaring, not because we're saying we're so great, but we're roaring so that if anyone else in our tribe, in our herd, hears us, that we find each other. So here I am in 2022 roaring on YouTube um, for my star family, my soul family, my tribe. 
my androgynous other jack of clubs or anyone else in the club suit come on in the water's warm um, this has been an interesting chat with you uh, i look forward to any comments you might have the system of destiny cards is not an easy one to get into but if you're mentally attuned like i am oh here's this book and this book oh wait there was a fourth book to share with you dun, dun, dun. it's this one by robert lee camp as well cartas espiritus here he is robert lee camp and on the cover is the queen of clubs yes the queen of clubs knowledge and in this book he actually he actually gives a nice big focus on the jack of clubs sharing who you get along with and who you don't <laughs> or just know like if you've always tried to sort out something with someone and it just doesn't seem to fit there are certain cards in the deck that pair up they're very special and it's like finding the other half and when these cards find the other half they lock in and so you can be out here trying to lock as well but you're not part of that and so it's just holding space for oh that's why that's why i think for me the joy has also been um not only knowing myself but finding out why oh that's why it turns out when you read about the clubs why is one of the big questions always asked ah, hope this wasn't too much in too short of a time but thank you again for being with me on the ascension playground hope to see you next time we can go further into the cards if you show me that you want to learn a little bit more i'll be back thanks again bye-bye <laughs>